Uh, so this is our video on vectors and planes, the first video. And we're going to talk to start with about the equation of a plane. I can sketch this. I've written I can't sketch it. I can sketch it, but my sketches aren't as good as the sketches in the textbook. So I've just cut and pasted in the textbook for these sketches. And it shows you here that plane. I'm going to show you visually now, which won't be on the video that I present. Um, although some of you requested me actually doing it, which I might do at some point, and maybe somebody can help me with that. Um, I'll show you holding up a piece of paper, and that will represent my plane, and a pen or a finger or something will represent a line that meets that plane at some angle or whatever. So if you're thinking about a plane, a piece of paper is a really good way to think about it, and that way to think about intersecting planes, two pieces of paper intersect, they intersect at a line, and so you can see that quite easily and quite visually. Um, so the equation of a plane, uh, that's a plane. A plane is a 2D surface in a 3D space. So we have to be dealing fully with 3D spaces, and the vector cross product we just did was also dealing fully with 3D spaces. A unique plane can be represented by um, three different possibilities. So first of all, if I had three coordinates in 3D space, just like if I've got two coordinates in 2D space, that represents a straight line. If I've got three coordinates, there's going to be only one plane that can pass through those three coordinates. If I've got one, two, three here, if I move one of them, well, the plane can just rotate around off the axes that the other two create to meet that coordinate again. So any three coordinates will definitely have a plane that passes through them and will have a unique plane. There'll only be one plane that passes through those. Which means for you, if you're given three coordinates in 3D space, you will be able to determine an equation of a plane to represent that. Um, two lines also. So for lack of anything better, I'm currently holding up two pens except I can't find a second one. Now I found a second one. Two lines like this represent a plane. There's only one piece of paper that can sit on those two lines. And that's the single plane. The only time that's not the case is if the two lines are parallel. Now there's a lot of different paper that could, a lot of different ways you could represent that. Or, so they're parallel and separated. No, maybe there's only one way you can do that as well. Yeah, okay. Only one way we're parallel, so it's only if they're the same that obviously you could have more. Um, and then the third one is a position vector and a line perpendicular to the position vector. So what you're going to see is when we describe a plane using vectors, we use the third option. We use a point. So if you have a, a particular point here on the board, I draw a point and I tell you that the line that's perpendicular to the plane that this point is on comes out of the board, there's only one plane it could be and that would be this flat one here. Every other plane, if you rotate it around so it still goes through that point in any direction, it will not be perpendicular to that vector coming out of the board anymore. So with those two bits of information, you can represent a plane in vector space. Um, so that's the third option. And here's a description of it. N is the Common name, it can be called anything, but typically the textbook will use N, the syllabus uses N, the formula sheet will use N, so you'll probably want to use N. N is our representation of a line that is perpendicular to the plane, and this symbol is what we typically use for plane, uh, which is a capital Pi. A um, is the position vector of a point A on that plane as well, um, so little a is that position vector. And so, because it's little a and it's as a position vector, it means OA. So it's from the origin to A. That's that position vector. Um, and then this is, this is the maths now. So we, we declare P as another point on the plane. And that means that AP is a vector on the plane. It's a line that's on the plane. Which means that AP dot N, remember N is perpendicular and AP is now on the plane. N is perpendicular to the plane. AP dot N will be zero, because perpendicular lines have a dot product of zero. Um, but AP can be written in terms of things that we know, so we don't know AP, but we know that P can be represented as a line from the origin using the R notation that we've done in that previous rep, uh, lesson, and we've already defined A. So AP can be represented as um, going from A to P will be negative A, positive R. So we have to follow that vector, negative A, and then up positive R. So AP can be written as R minus A. Now it turns out the dot product, and we've spoken about this briefly before, but the dot product is distributive. 
that means that we can expand the brackets over another vector. So if we've got r minus a dot n, in this case, that's the same as saying r dot n minus a dot n, and we can put in the appropriate um, associated proof, but that's our unit one work. And then our rearrangement is this. So I'm hoping what you're seeing here, it's all to do with vectors. Mathematically, in terms of the algebra, that's nothing, that's, that's trivial algebra for you, but um, it sets up the vector plane equation. Yep. You wrote r dot a instead of n dot a. Second last step. Um, yep, I did. And I'm going to write a dot n. Good pickup. Um, and then we rearrange that. So this is the common vector notation or vector representation of a plane. And we will typically know A and N. Remember, we've defined A and N. But keep in mind, and I think I've written this here, for you copy down, so I'll go just to there. A is a point on the plane that's known to be on the plane, but A, if you're talking about a plane, this plane here, A could be an infinite number of points. So this plane could be represented by an A and an N where there are infinite or any representations. N, additionally, is a vector perpendicular to the plane. N will always be going in the same direction because it's perpendicular to the plane, but it could be a whole bunch of different lengths. So that means N could be an infinite number of different lengths. So um, we might all individually represent the same plane but with different equations. Um, and it's kind of the same as saying, well, we could, have, we could say a linear function is y equals 2x minus 7, and then somebody else might say, no, that linear function is actually y minus 2x equals 7. It's just a different variant on the same thing. So just keep that in mind. You might, you're not going to get a unique representation of a plane, but if you write a vector, a plane of, um, sorry, a vector equation of a plane in this form, it will represent a unique plane. So each equation represents a unique plane, but each plane represents a different vector. Yes? Oh, I did forget to put one or seven. Thanks. Probably gets to a point where you have to question whether it's worth interrupting the flow <laughs> to say that. <laughs> um, now, we know A, we know N, they're defined. So A dot N, dot product is a scalar product, A dot N is just a constant. So we can take this further and say that R, which is the line on the plane, Ah, sorry, the, the line from the point, from the origin to P, which is a, a, a point on the plane, R dot N equals K. So where N is perpendicular to the plane and R is a line from the origin to the plane, then that equals K, whatever K is, based on our choice of A and our knowledge of N. And we have K equals A dot N there, and it's just a number. Um, so further to that, N... We know n, it's, it's going to be a known quantity, so we can write that as n1, n2, n3, but you'll know it. And r we write generally as x, y, z, so r is going to be a point on the plane in x, y, z form. And we can expand r dot n to be n1, x plus n2, y plus n3, z equals k. n1, n2 are just numbers. So therefore, we can have a plane as something like um, 2x minus y plus 3z equals 7. And that will represent one two-dimensional plane in three-dimensional space. Um, and I think for some of you that might have been what we were expecting to be able to represent a three-dimensional line as, because a two-dimensional line has everything but the Z. But a two-dimensional line, so a line in two-dimensional space can be represented like that. A plane in three-dimensional space can be represented like that. And then a four-dimensional shape in, um, in four-dimensional space. So a three-dimensional shape in four-dimensional space would have an extra factor in there as well, but we don't have to deal with that, which is good. Um, in addition, we have these two definitions. So in your exam, you might be asked to find the vector equation or Cartesian equation. They're both really similar, and usually we would actually have just k here, some constant. So the vector equation will be r dot n, where n might be a column vector for that perpendicular vector, and it equals some constant whereas the Cartesian equation will look like this. It'll be where you do the expansion. The, the gap between the vector and Cartesian equation is really small. It's just one step of working. So if you get one, you can easily get the other. Um, and you'll see that in some of our stuff. Uh, I think the orange stuff here is what I've just talked about. So there are an infinite number of points in a plane for A. 
there are an infinite number of lengths of n and two directions, so therefore there's an infinite number of equations for one plane, but there's only one plane for each equation. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's have a quick look at example one, um, and then I might give you some time to start this exercise, and I'll take it a bit further on Friday, and you, can also, you need to do some of the vector cross product stuff as well. What is the equation of a plane that contains that point and has vector this perpendicular to it? So what I'm saying here is that A, we're going to say is equal to 3, um, 3i minus 6j plus 2k and n is equal to 2i plus 3j minus k. So we've set up, we're told n because we're told that is the vector that's perpendicular to it. And there, there are other options for n, but that's the one we're going to have. There's other options for a, but that's the only one we've been told. And so we would have r dot n equals a dot n. That's our vector equation of a plane. Um, so x, well actually I'll leave it, is the, oh, when it says the equation of a plane, um, it could be either vector or Cartesian. So I'll leave it as r for now, and then I'll show you both representations. r dot 2, 3, negative 1 is equal to a dot n, which is 3, negative 6, 2, dot 2, 3, negative 1. And that means that r dot 2, 3, negative 1 is equal to 3 times 2 is 6, plus negative 6 times 3 is negative 18, plus 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, so it's negative 20 minus 6, so that's just equal to 14. And that is the vector equation of a plane. And if we expanded this out to get the Cartesian form, then we would let R be x, y, z, dot, 2, 3, negative 1, and that equals 14, and therefore 2x plus 3y minus 2z is equal to 14 is the Cartesian form. And... Cartesian is actually named after a famous mathematician, so it should be capitalised. Does anybody know the famous mathematician is named after? Cartesian. Sorry? Cartesian. Carl. 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 Why is it? Carl. Frederick Carter. I'll answer this question first. Rene Descartes? Why is it? Did I say Carter? I said Carter. Carter. Whatever. No, I just said the answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Negative 2z. Um... Oh, sorry, I, th I treated Z like a 2. My apologies. Z? So it's just negative Z. There we go, that's better. Um, excellent. Are there any other questions? Um, this is example 2, if you want to have a play with it. Can you determine the vector equation of a plane formed by the three points? There are examples in your textbook of this, so you're welcome to work ahead a bit. I would suggest now, I might just stop this.